Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend Steve, although these days I go by May Lynn. I am a trans woman. If you have a problem with that, you can suck it. It's episode 434 of the podcast. Yes, yes, Little Lebowski Urban Achievers, and proud we are of all of that. We've got some news to do in the opening. We've got a really good Steve's historic approximations coming up after that. We will be talking about uh, a folk singer who defines the word ally. Very excited about it. And okay. our movie this and our movie this week is COVID-19 Invasion, starring yes. quotes, starring Kevin Nash. Um, wow, what a big piece of shit. I don't want to get too into it, but holy crap. Yes. This holy was crap. a huge piece of shit. This was bad. You know how bad it was? Uh, it, I've never seen a movie right before the end credits apologize. <laughs> Right before the credits, to have just a just a statement going, yeah, we know, yeah, sorry, it it wow, uh, but anyway, uh, buddy, yes, we're currently recording the podcast every other week because it helps me with it, my anxiety and my stress to not have to do the show every week. Plus, I have had. A crazy ass year so far, but I, that's beside the point. But the problem, the problem with doing the podcast every other week is that a lot of nuggets of news fall through the cracks. But never fear, my friend, because the Pope on Film podcast is here to give you uh, an educational news facial with a little bit that we like to call the Pope on Film news smatterings. It, it's not the best name for a segment, no. but I still like it. I still think it's cute. The Pope on Film News Smatterings. I like it. First off, Kevin Smith released a trailer for Clerks 3. Did you see this, Bunny? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. Clerks, Clerks 3, the making of Clerks 1. Basically. basically, like uh, he's making the first film exist in the third film. Yes. Which is about as annoyingly meta as you can get. Not surprising coming from Kevin Smith. Um, what are your thoughts on this, Bunny? Uh, I, I'm just generally disappointed in Kevin Smith and I really didn't want that to happen. You know, I was even willing to like overlook yoga hosers, uh. you know, but like you can really only just push me so far. Right. You know, I mean, like, yeah, the Jay and Silent Bob reboot was kind of, eh. You know, I never and, bothered to see that. See, I think that proves my point right there. Yeah. And, I, and I, now I, and now this. Which. Yeah, I'll probably watch yeah. it and I'll probably hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Smith, though. Kevin Smith. And also, here's here's another thing that happened. Since the last time we recorded an episode, Howie Mandel showed a graphic prolapsed anus on his TikTok. Okay. This happened. This was a thing. This is fact. Howie Mandel, it was like midnight or 1 a.m. What was it, like a week ago, Amber? 
And I don't know, maybe he was on some medication or something, but he always posts weird shit on TikTok. See, I don't know TikTok. And he just posted uh, a picture of a person's a gross graphic close-up picture of someone's prolapsed anus and this is a sign of a good this is a sign of a good movie like this week's movie when there's a fart joke three minutes into the film yes and here's here's how you can tell you're listening to a good podcast when the words prolapsed anus shows up 10 minutes in yes that's a sign of a good podcast right there you know when you hear prolapsed Jeannie does want to know, and I think it's an important question to ask before we get too far afield here. Was it his anus? He said that it was a friend's. What did he specifically say, Amber? A very good friend, I would imagine. Apparently. I can't really remember, but he was like, um, I'm asking, like, basically asking for a friend. This happened to my friend. Um, He's like, maybe it's a symptom of covid uh, like what do you guys think it is and whatnot and it was up for hours and everyone was like did i really just see that and it didn't get taken down for like hours yeah it's fascinating the way that you know tiktok works that like whoa you showed a nipple we got to take this down immediately but howie mandel shows a prolapsed anus and it gets to stay up for hours this happened. Well, it's weird. I still haven't gotten any sort of answer as to how it happened or why. I mean, we did we did live through Goatsy. Yeah. So exactly how we traumatic. Did. I mean, I understand for the kids today this being shocking, but you know, yeah. Back in the wild west days of the internet where we had Goatee and we had Tub Girl. Come on. What is this? It's this, you know, this is nothing. It, and it, the thing that shocked me is that it was Howie Mandel, notorious germaphobe Howie Mandel. Yes. You would, you would think that like notorious germaphobe and prolapsed anus would not be on the same page, but apparently no. I, I'd be wrong. I assumed. I assumed when Howie Mandel did this that Howie Mandel, for lack of a better explanation, that Howie Mandel was going through a Paula Abdul. Okay. He's he's like on two different TV shows. He's working on comedy. He's working on producing a movie. He's working on this. He's working on that. He's working on a book. He's got a wife. He has kids he never sees, and he's just so completely burned out that, like, he's on TikTok at 1 a.m. showing prolapsed anuses, you know? I, I still find it amazing that in the year 2022, we still know the name Howie Mandel. I don't think that's right. Well, he's like a... Yeah, I know, but he should have gone the way like of Sinbad. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Amber just said that her generation knows Howie Mandel as uh, like uh, America's Got Talent and as a TV show host, and that's it. I I still know Howie Mandel as the comedian that would put a condom over his head. Yes. That's how I know Howie Mandel. Yes. Bobby's world. Saint Elsewhere was the one where the whole thing was just a figment of a of an autistic kid's imagination. Am, am, am I right? In as that? it as it turned out, yes, yes. Okay. The Saint yeah, Elsewhere oh, hospital. Right yes, the Saint Elsewhere hospital turned out to actually be a hospital in a snow globe. Yeah, that this autistic child had. Yeah. That's why every time I see an autistic child, I say, thanks for saying elsewhere. Yeah. You know? I I say put him in charge of programming. Right? Uh, So, 
In other news, my car is dead, and we're working on fixing it. So I haven't gone to too many movies. I kind of miss going to the movies. Yeah. Uh, once or twice a week, but I did go and see Thor four: The Foreigning. We are going like title. right after this. Yeah. Okay. Um. So keep your yap shut. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to give you a bunch of spoilers for Thor 4. Number one, Icarus kills Ajax. What was that? Icarus kills Ajax. Oh, well, thank God for that. My new thing now is whenever a Marvel movie comes out, doing spoilers for the Marvel movies that came right before it. So, like, I'm saying eternal spoilers, like anyone cares. Yeah. Uh, Thor 4 spoiler, you're not going to believe this. Jim from The Office is Reed Richards. Yes. Uh, spoiler alert. And really alert. wasn't very effective at all. Yeah. Sp- here's a spoiler alert for Thor 4. Uh, there are three different Spider-Men in one movie. Yes. What? So, uh, uh, Thor 4. See, you're you're about to go see the movie, so I don't want to say too much. I'll say this. This is not a spoiler. It 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 in no way is a part of the plot at all. Thor's roommate is in this. Well. Thor's roommate Daryl is in Thor 4. Oh. Remember those mini movies? Yes. <laughs> that they did yeah well now in new asgard which is in like whatever small country in the middle of nowhere now daryl is like a tour guide working with the city of thor did his former roommate good is what i'm saying well that's it, nice it's in no way a part of the plot but i noticed i'm like hey that guy kind of looks like his roommate huh and then I noticed the name tag said, hello, my name is Daryl. And I'm like, yes, that means all of that weirdo shit was canon. That Daryl needed a roommate and Thor became his roommate for two movies. And then Daryl moved to L.A. and his roommate was uh, the guy from um, the, the Grandmaster. The Grandmaster, yes. So all of that's canon now. Which also means that Steve Rogers killed a prisoner and promised Thor that he wouldn't tell anybody about it. That was it. That was a small... Anyway, that's, that's uh, my favorite part of Thor 4 is the fact that Daryl is in it and has like three or four lines. It made me happy. Yes. But it's... It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's a Marvel movie. It's fine. I'm a little bit upset because before Thor uh, Love and Thunder came out, there was a lot of promises about like, oh, yes, LGBT representation. Yes, Valkyrie, you will know her uh, sexuality and it's at the forefront and then I see the movie and it's like wait that was it that was nothing we were promised more and just it it, it upset me yes. it upset me a little bit but uh, let's let's move on from that it's been another bad couple of weeks for Vincent Kennedy McMahon oh good what's happening to him now uh there were three more secret hush money payments to people that he uh, sexually harassed and had sexual relationships with, uh, including one former wrestler, one former female wrestler in 2005. There's a list of people it could be. It could be Molly Holly. It could be uh, Nydia. It could be... Uh, Something Marie, I don't remember her name. There's a list, but 
I think uh, I'm it's going. Kind of... I'm going with Nidia right there. I'm going with Nidia. Nidia. Uh, so, uh, the good news is, is that yeah, Vince McMahon, he's a horrible person, and he's done horrible things, and somewhere along the line. Vince McMahon, uh, good friends with Donald Trump. His it, Vince McMahon's wife was a member of his administration. Yes. Vince McMahon, real piece of shit. <laughs> uh, his his career is going down the toilet, and it couldn't have happened to a more deserving person. But at some point in time, Vince McMahon just, I guess he just thought that he was the WWE, you know? Yeah. Vince McMahon just, he thinks he's it, and uh, he's going well, down, and I'm really happy about that. Is it, how wrong is he really, though? I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. he took his dad's relatively small company and made it a worldwide thing. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I... Whereas uh, WCW... He's a scumbag, got... but he kind of has a point there. Yeah. Uh, whereas WCW, uh, they got their money from uh, Ted Turner, and this is how Ted Turner got his money. I'm not sure if a lot of people know this, but he was accidentally sewn into the pants of the big Charlie Brown at the Thanksgiving parade. Yes. And so he made all of his money off the big Charlie Brown. And that's why to this day, Ted Turner hates bald boys. Yes, He despises bald boys. In fact, when Ted Turner sees a bald boy, he thinks he's back in the pants. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, Netflix was working on this big, uh, glossy documentary of the life of Vince McMahon. I'm happy to say it's been canceled. Okay. So Good. Netflix, Netflix, uh, has its issues, but it gave, I think you could leave with Tim Robinson a third season. It canceled Bright 2, and it stopped work on the Vince McMahon documentary. So, uh, good for you. Good for you, Netflix. Yes. It, it, yes, you do have a lot of transphobic comedians, but you did say fuck off to Vince McMahon, so it really is a give and a take, you know? Yes. Uh, yes, Netflix gives a platform to transphobic comedians who make my life as a trans woman a living hell, but I am getting a third season of Tim Robinson, so, you know, you take the good... You take the bad, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life. Uh, the crazy thing is, is that Vince McMahon... Okay, but all wait, these... wait, wait, wait. See, let, let's not go past Netflix too quick, okay? Yes. Because Netflix is kind of emblematic and representative of my life. Okay. Okay? So, like, in the 80s, I get really into comic books, and I feel like, wow, look at this really cool thing that I found and discovered, only to find out later that it was the decade where everyone in the fucking world got into comic books, and there was nothing unique about me in my find whatsoever. Hmm. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, And frankly, I've also come to a conclusion that we could pretty much discount any knowledge I have about comic books because they're all shit that I read like almost 40 fucking years ago. Like forever ago. You know, so yeah. what does that matter anymore? Yeah. Come into the 90s, really get into wrestling. And here is this thing. Here's something I found. Here's something I like. Here's something like, you know, almost feels like something underground in the decade where everyone, everyone was watching wrestling. Yeah. Every fucking person watching Everybody. wrestling 
Again, like comics, nothing new, nothing unique, nothing. So Netflix start having a problem with Netflix, but I keep the subscription, keep the subscription, never watch Netflix. Like, okay, this is it. This is finally it. I'm pulling the trigger. I'm canceling Netflix. Yeah. How did that work out for you? Then everybody in the fucking world cancels goddamn Netflix. Yeah. Maybe I'm looking at this all wrong. Maybe I'm just that goddamn cool. Maybe. Where You're everyone a needs to follow what I'm doing. Yeah. You're a trendsetter. Yes. You're ahead of the curve. That might be... No, I think... Like, no, see, I think I, I, I just am the curve. You're really gleaming the cube. Yes. As, as the young people say. You know who else has been having a wonderfully horrible time who also deserves all of the horrible things that happened to him? Yes, I am talking about Elon Musk. Yes. His, uh, his life seems to be deteriorating as well. His Twitter deal fell through. Uh, uh, Trump recently turned on him, which I'm really excited about. So the right is torn. <laughs> uh, plus, he had secret twins. This came out uh, this week that he had uh, twins with uh, a woman who worked for him. And uh, those twins uh, came out, were birthed just a few weeks before he gave birth with his girlfriend gave birth. Okay. So Elon Musk is just having sex left and right. Plus, and this is true, I learned this like two days ago, scribbled it into the margins here on the new smatterings. Elon Musk has a dad. His name is Errol Musk. Yes. His dad has had two kids with his stepdaughter. Yes. Which I'm not too good when it comes to like uh, family tree math, but I believe that means that Elon Musk's brothers were birthed by his sister. Yes. I got that right? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Okay. There you go. Hooray! Elon Musk's life is falling apart. Oh, how interesting that right before Elon Musk's life fell apart, he took a sharp turn to the right. Gee! Yeah. It's almost as if a lot of problematic people have a habit of doing that right before horrible things come to light. Like, like every time, like if suddenly uh, Oprah Winfrey came out and said, look, the media has gone too far demonizing people. So sick of the media. Donald Trump was right. The media is a bunch of fake news and a bunch of liars always saying horrible things about people and what they definitely didn't do with a donkey. It's like, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to assume some shit's about to go down in the Oprah Winfrey universe. Yes. If she said that. <clears throat> so it, basically that's what Elon Musk has had before his life started uh, being ruined. I've become obsessed with this game, uh, with this video game called Fall Guys. Uh, it's been out for a really long time, which is, and the fact that I'm into it doesn't say anything for the game's popularity. I don't play a lot of video games. Usually when I get into something, uh, that's usually a sign that it's about to die. But I'm, I'm obsessed with this game called Fall Guys. The way that I explained it to my wife is that basically imagine a battle royale, but a cutesy Japanese Hello Kitty Battle Royale for children, and that's this game. It's really kind of cool, and I love it. The kids are playing it right now in front of me as I do the podcast, and I'm... uh, 
who's playing right now? Is that you, Jaden? You're doing great. You're almost finished with this round. You're doing wonderful. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Elon Musk. Fuck him. Yeah. Uh, uh, another bit of news. Mark Cuban. Rich guy. Yes. Uh, but here's the thing. Like, I, like I, I was talking to uh, my son, Mal. About Mar about a rich like billionaire Mark Cuban, and Mal said, "Who's Mark Cuban?" And I said, "The fact that you can even say that should tell you that he's not problematic." Yes, because if you know an ultra rich person's name off the top of your head, it's usually not for a good reason. Yes, this is true. You know, you can you can name all of these rich people because they're horrible. But the fact that I mentioned Mark Cuban to people and both uh, Mal and my wife go, wait, who? It's like, OK, you, you know, that's good. I, so Mark- I only know him for him having been the rich guy to get on television to criticize Trump and then having go- to go backwards to find out has something to do with some stupid ass show called Shark Tank. Yeah, Sharky Shark Tanky Tank. And that is that is the extent of my knowledge of Mark Cuban. Uh he has a whole lot of money, so I still don't fucking like him. He he every once in a while he'll get a bug up his butt to try and shake up an industry like there was some talk about him trying to shake up the movie theater business like a decade ago and he had all these plans uh he had all of these plans for all of these things that he wanted to do uh for movie theaters and he owns a sports team and and he does Every once in a while, he tries to upset a business. And what he's doing right now is he started a new uh, service called Mark Cuban's Cost Plus Drug Company. And it's a warning. Oh, okay. It's a mail to you subscription service. He makes the drugs himself, you know, his people. And he makes them at a cheaper cost and he marks them up 15% from its making price. And then he sends them to you and you pay $5 shipping. And I'm on it. I'm on a estrogen and a testosterone blocker. Now I am on H HRT is what they call it. Hormone replacement therapy. Okay. And the, the pills that I take are really expensive. But Mark Cuban has a service now where where you sign up with him, you go through him, you get your prescription sent to him, and the prices are remarkably cheap. Remarkably cheap. If there's a medication out there and you can't afford it, you should go and check out Cost Plus Drug Company because he's specifically in business, in the prescription drug business for one reason, and that's to piss off actual prescription drug people. And it's just some rich dude who's decided to try and piss off an entire industry. But this industry deserves it. And now I have my next um, uh, meeting about my HRT is in September. And when that happens, we're going to get my prescriptions moved from CVS, where I'm paying like $90 every three months, to I'll be paying about. 30 bucks through our Cuban service. And it's really great. And I, it, it, I, it, it's not making a lot of news right now, but the cost plus drug company, cheap medication. If there's a medication out there, you, you can't really afford it. Uh, Mark Cuban might have you covered, which is, which is really interesting, but yeah, Mark Cuban cost plus drug company want to get the word out there it, it, it's uh really good stuff and it's inexpensive do you have any news money that has happened between our last episode and this episode that you'd like to shoehorn in here 
Oh. The Thor mid-credit sequence got me super excited. Really? I will say that. Yes, okay. I got super excited. As a comic book fan, I got super excited. If I was just a person who was watching these movies, I'd be really confused by the mid-credit sequence. But you and I, Bonnie, see the mid-credit sequence and we go, hell yes. Okay, I am excited for this. Yes. As comic book fans. Really great. And keep an eye out for Daryl. Really excited that Daryl's in this. I mean, so many, so many horrible, horrible, horrible things happen in a two-week span. You know, yeah. it's it's kind of hard to keep track of them all. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's nice to see Biden and the Saudi prince be bestie buds now. You know, but at the same time, the right was like, oh, this will certainly huh, being nice to this Saudi, this murderous Saudi prince. Oh, this will haunt Biden. Don't y'all remember when Trump and the other Saudis took a picture in front of the evil gigantic orb from Dr. Doom's lair? Yes. Like the freaking like like Donald Trump just went to a Legion of Doom headquarters meeting. Yeah, exactly. It's like fucking ridiculous. And it's like, yeah, it, what this proves is that American presidents are beholden to rich Saudi leaders. It doesn't I, I don't think it, it it says bad about Biden, but it says bad about every freaking president, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I, I am sorry. I, I hold all politicians responsible at this point. Yep. You know, as if you're a career politician, you've been doing this your whole life. You've been in government for decades. It's your shit ass leadership that's brought us to the edge of fascism. Yes, I don't care who the fuck you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's basically been this week it's been horrible uh trans people are still the the absolute they're responsible for everything they're they're the scapegoat of the world right now so hooray i picked a great time to realize i'm trans yeah right not not winning any popularity contests but um Hey, and also for those of you who are listening, uh, I, I I am a a trans woman. I do have a female voice. I just don't like using it for this podcast. This is my regular voice. If I'm at a store and I have to talk to a cashier or tell a Karen to please move out of my way because white people tend to take a whole aisle and not care anyway. Uh, I do have a female voice that I use. I'm just not using it in this episode. But won't really that also come with the estrogen treatment? Not, not really. I don't think it'll be softening my voice. My wife says that my face is more defined in a way that it hasn't been before. I'm not entirely sure about that. And I can't show you, but uh, my breasts are taking shape. They're not growing yet, but they're taking shape. Okay. Is what uh, both uh, Natasha and Emerald have said. Yeah. So, yay. I, I am just letting you know ahead of time, I am not going to notice. Because you are... Flurry. Yeah. <laughs> so... And you've always been that big and blurry. That's a good point. So I, I, I couldn't even really tell if you were wearing a dress or not at any given point. I'm wearing so, leggings. So your, your face becoming more defined? Yeah, no way in hell I'm going to notice that shit. I'm just letting you know ahead of time. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. 
So that's it for the Pope on Film News Smatterings. That's it for uh, our monologue. We will be moving on to Steve's historical approximations now. I'm very excited about this one. We might not even do running out the clock. We probably will. Good job, Jaden, getting to the finale. I believe in you. But uh, this is a really good one. We're going to be talking about uh, pride and gay rights and Bob Dylan, and the song The House of the Rising Sun. And we're going to be talking about a, a, the word ally and what that means. Okay. That's what we're going to be talking about. I will try not to get too upset, but we're going to be talking about allies and what that means and the absolute pinnacle, the greatest ally in the history of, of, of the word pride. I'm very excited about this uh, this chap. It's going to be really, really good. So uh, we do this through Zoom, and so we're going to get cut off in a second. In about a, a minute, Jaden has made it to the finale. Uh, uh, he's getting caught up. He's getting caught up in the hammers. I believe in you, Jaden. Oh. Oh, has round made it over. Jaden made it. Uh, it, it, the game, Fall Guys, it starts off with 60 different people, and it's 60 actual people that you're playing against, and you keep going in these rounds where a certain amount of people are eliminated until you get to the final round where it's just you and, like, eight other people, and you're still playing, and, and, and only one person wins. I have gotten to the finale three times, but I've never won a game. Jaden just got to the finale, and he didn't win. It's fun. It, it uh, Fall Guys reminds me of like Wii Sports, like Wii games, where like you and your mom and your grandmother could pick up a controller and play. And yeah. I haven't felt this way about a video game in a while, but it's really simple and easy, stupid game that like anybody can play and have fun. And yeah, I dig this game. Yeah, it's, really fun. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, so that's it for our monologue. Uh, there's going to be a, a little break and while I log back on to Zoom and stay tuned for Steve.